Hello and welcome back once again to the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. This is episode 52. John and Wendy talk to Tracy Sponnenberg. I'm your host, John. And I'm Wendy. How's it going, John? I'm doing very well. Coming off a couple of big weeks that we've had and yeah. wanted to talk briefly about uh, something kind of cool that happened in the last few weeks. <laughs> I, I'm going to I'm going to revisit the HR superhero because I think this was a really, really cool thing that popped up. Previous guest and our pal Michelle Kohlhoff came up with something kind of cool. Why don't you maybe explain a little bit, maybe some of the listeners that didn't see what she did. Maybe you can talk a little bit about it, Wendy. Sure. I, d I don't get on Twitter as much as I used to um, during the day. And so, uh, you know, I checked my phone at one point during the day and my Twitter notifications were out of control. And I was like, well, this is crazy. And apparently our friend Michelle had written a blog post that resonated with pretty much the entire internet, or at least the HR corner of it. So she wrote a post um, in early January where she decided to put down some uh, guidelines for herself for 2019 and came up with four words that she wanted to live by for 2019. And uh, so she, she put it out there, put down the reasons why, um, put it out onto Twitter, and everyone started sharing suddenly their four words and tagging more people and sharing more words and tagging people. And it was it was fantastic, and it's wonderful to see how the the community, the HR community, just kind of sees that, sees something good that goes out to the universe like that, and keeps it going, um, and just keeps it, it tumbling. And I'm I'm hoping um, I'll put it out there on Twitter as well. I hope everyone keeps up with it, and maybe we'll have to add it to the Twitter ch to our Twitter chat, John, to uh, say, hey, what are your four words, and what are you? Uh, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> what are your four words, Wendy? So my four words, after some scrambling this afternoon <laughs> to come up with them, um, I decided on intentional, connect, grounded, and create. I don't know what they mean yet to me and how I'm going to go about that. I need to spend a little more time on it, but I'm going with those four. How about you? Cool. Well, we share at least one word. I had create, <laughs> in, engage, laugh, and grow. I think create, obviously, continuing to create content here with the podcast mm -hmm. and with the chat and some other yeah. things I'm working through and trying to get going. Engaging, obviously, continuing to make connections and be out there. Laugh. You know, I loved everybody's comments, but nobody really talked about that. I think we all need to step back and make sure that we keep perspective and I, I love laughing. You know that um, <laughs> I, I can entertain myself pretty easily. So, uh, and then grow. I think there's uh, just a lot of opportunities to continue to to learn and better myself as a professional and as a podcaster and, and as a person. So, yeah, I, I just I wanted to thank Michelle by giving her the yes. shout out and the superhero designation. I thought it was a tremendous conversation, like you said. Yeah, put it out in the universe, and people were glomming onto it and and we wanted to take a, a couple minutes to to acknowledge it yeah definitely so uh, you know the call out there if you selected your four words share them uh continue to share them and tell us why and let's keep that conversation going all year i you know accountability is a huge thing absolutely yeah. well enough about word four yes. words because we're gonna have more <laughs> words with our guests which i'm super excited and we were able to to get with us tonight yeah wendy i'll let you make the introduction and we'll get started so excited to welcome Tracy Sponnenberg to the show tonight. She is the um, Senior Vice President of HR for the Granite Group, a wholesale distributor based in New Hampshire. She is responsible for leading all HR functions for nearly 40 locations and over 500 employees. She has gained a broad HR background across several industries in more than 20 years of HR, focusing on working with CEOs to develop strategic people strategies to foster growth. She has a BA in psychology from Holy Cross and an MA in human resources from Framington State University. She is the co-founder of Disrupt HR New Hampshire and HR Rebooted, a member of SHRM's special expertise panel, and teaches the SHRM certification course at SNHU. Tracy, welcome to the show tonight. And our first question is, what's in your glass? Hi, Wendy. Hi, John. Uh, hello, hello. Yeah, this is probably going to be the most boring answer. So I don't drink. So neither now nor later will it be wine, which seems to be a good, a good theme, but it's Spindrift Seltzer. 
I don't think anybody said Spindrift yet. We got a lot of <laughs> no. water. Into my, I don't think no, anybody said Spindrift, it, though. I don't think. It's not a plug, but it's great. I gave up. <laughs> I wish it was Pepsi. I gave up soda a few years ago, but uh, yeah, it's seltzer. <laughs> Very boring. It's our HR social hour brought to you tonight by no. Spindrift. Yeah. Yes, it's great. <laughs> Very good stuff. We're always looking for sponsors. Yes, Thanks, there Tracy. You go. There you go. There you go. Well, I, I, I guess, you know, I'm going to go off a little bit off course and we're going to talk about how you got into HR. We were just talking about the four words, though, Tracy. Did you take part in that? I haven't yet. And I've been watching it. And um, I'll, I will. I promise you I will get on Twitter and I will do that. But um, I haven't okay. put enough thought into that. But I have I have some ideas. We're going to hold you to it. Okay, well, in the meantime, then we, we, we've you know, I know we've connected online and traded notes and what have you. Don't know a lot of your backstory, though. How exactly did you get your start in human resources? Um, I'm probably a little bit unusual, and I knew what I wanted to do in high school, um, which is sort of weird. But I had a really strong interest in psychology and a really strong interest in business, and it really combines the two. And it's a cliche, but I loved people, and I wanted to work with people. And I had an aunt who worked in human resources, which was personnel at the time. And I was able to shadow her a little bit, learn a little bit about what she did. And it didn't scare me away. In college, I studied psychology, but I had a chance to work through half of college doing an HR internship that I loved. And I continued with it. And I've, it, my entire career has been in HR. I, I love to hear that you pursued it from the get go. I think you and maybe what was it Wendy or Joey Price, I think did it, yeah. you know, recognize it early on. So I think you're the first two that said even before college that you knew this is what you wanted to do. I think that's great. Yeah. That's doesn't, awesome. Doesn't happen very often. I think more people fall into it than not because the, you know, <laughs> right. it's it, looking back what the 17 year old, I can't imagine, you know, I have teenagers. I cannot imagine them now saying, I want to go into <laughs> HR. I'd love it. But, uh, yeah, I I might if my one of my daughters said that I'd be like, really? What? What? Why? <laughs> so Tracy, in your current role, what what's been the most exciting thing you've been able to do to change uh, or improve your organization, and why that thing? I think we've done a lot of really neat things. I've been there about three and a half years, and but I think the thing that maybe made the most change, although it's been fairly. Quiet. I think it, it made change over time was a, a tech overhaul. So we really gutted our HR technology, um, took the framework of what we had and then built from there and really changed everything to try to help improve the experience for our team members, for our managers and, and really for ourselves. And I think that that set the foundation for a lot of other things that we could do because we could then focus on the things that really mattered once we stopped entering new hires into 16 different places. But that's Perish so much fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was, no, well, it was, well, that wasn't fun, but it was fun doing the, the, the technology stuff. So that's been the, um, I think that was really exciting for me. I wasn't, I'm not a tech expert now, but I learned an awful lot. And um, it was a new, really a new area for me. I, I love to see that. My organization we're kind of still going live with, yeah. <laughs> um, with an ERP HRIS. And it, it's been interesting to watch people evolve. And um, I, I, since I'm new enough to the organization, it's not so much of a change for me, but you can, you can tell who's been there the longest because right. they're kind of like, oh, this is different. Oh, no, wait a minute. I got to go here. I got to go here. But it's, it's nice, as you said, to not have to go to three or four different places. <laughs> Right. <laughs> to find what you need. Right. And and when I came in, it's uh, the, my predecessor would have done it if the funds were available. And, and then there was a person there for a short period of time. And then I came in and it, things happened in the meantime. And, and you don't know what you don't know. So I think they didn't necessarily know that all of these things could be digitized. And, and so it took a long time and it took a lot of effort. My team worked really, really hard and I really stretched them out of their kind of comfort zones. Um, but they did a great job and they really owned um, large chunks of the whole process. Tracy, Wendy mentioned in your bio, she talked about HR Rebooted, mm -hmm. and this is something that you've started. I've, I've seen a little bit of it out there. I've seen some of your videos. Talk to us about you know, kind of what led you to create it, a little more about really what you're trying to do with the platform and what are your expectations 
for the year, you know, kind of, you know, we always talk about, you know, as we plan to take over the right. world, what do you plan to do with same HR thing. Same thing. In yeah, we'll be, <laughs> change, the, change the world <laughs> is what we say. Bit. Change the world of HR. I left a company called Emerson Ecologics um, in 2015. And um, when I left, I had reached out to, uh, I didn't advertise for my job, but I promised my CEO I would have uh, a great person for him. And I reached out to a handful of people I thought could be a good fit. And there was this woman named Michelle Strasberger that I had seen speak um, on metrics. And we were a very metric driven organization. It was a developing skill set for me. So I thought she could really bring a lot to the role. I had no idea if she was interested. So I reached out to her. She was a couple months later, she was in the role. And, and one of my deals with my boss at the time was, you know, you need to meet with Michelle a couple of times and take her to lunch and, and go through things. I said, all right, I guess I can do that. Well, you know, three and a half years later, we're still doing it. So we still, we just never stopped. So we became really, really good friends. And we've always off and on talked about doing something together. And I had been thinking of starting a, a podcast focused on, on business and she had been thinking of something. And so we both went to a conference in October and she said, you know what? I think we should do a podcast. And I said, great. Let's do some videos. And we just kind of hashed out a, a business plan. We call it a project because we're not, you know, we're not making any money and um, we're just doing it to really change the world of HR. We think particularly in our area, there's a lot of companies that view HR as very transactional, very paperwork driven, very tactical. And there's a lot of HR professionals who view themselves that way consequently. So we're really trying to change the way HR is viewed by talking to interesting people who have interesting things to say and, and not all people in HR, people outside of HR too. And it's going to involve, we're, we're do, we have some speaking engagements coming up. So that's going to roll into that too. Um, but it's very video based, podcast based, very short, bite sized, not scripted. And if we're putting it out there and um, trying to change the world in by listening to others and what they have to say. I wish we'd had you around. So when you, hopefully you'll have heard the 50th episode yeah. by the time this comes out. Or <laughs> soon. But one of the questions we got was how, you know, what would we do to change the perception of HR? And it sounds what you just said is exactly what we talked about in terms of yep. getting away from the transactional and make sure we understand right. the business and what value can we bring? Yeah. Do we bring? I, I think it's tremendous that you're doing that. And I'm excited to see where that goes. Cause I, I that's, per, it's perfect. I mean, really, and to your point, I think so many people don't have that right. uh, perspective or, or we yeah, have to get them there. How do we, you know, how do we get fun. them there? We just and, started, literally just launched in December. And so it's, it's very, very new, but um, I always describe myself as a, a business person who specializes in HR. And I think that that is something that's foreign to a lot of HR professionals that I know. And the first thing I do when I go to a new job is understand the business, go to industry conferences, talk to people. And, and we, there are lots and lots of people who do that already with focus on the business. But until we as a, a, a function start doing that and start looking at the business and focusing on that, um, we won't change the company's perception. I love it. I love it. So kind of along those same lines, because you talked about you guys doing some more speaking engagements and that kind of thing, you have been selected to speak at Sharp yes. 19, yes. which is exciting. Uh, so maybe this is the first official Sherm podcast in ah. 2019. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so we're still a few months away. So what can you tell us about your presentation and why should people come see your presentation? So I've been attending HR conferences for years, many, many years. And um, I've only been speaking for the last couple of years. But one of the things that I was most drawn to in the conferences is um, practitioners, a practitioner perspective. And while it's wonderful seeing a, a practitioner speak uh, um, about a multi-billion dollar company and what they can do, it didn't always resonate with me. So the ones that I'm drawn to are ones that are really more our size. So we have 500 employees, which in New Hampshire is large, but it's technically a small business. And 99% of businesses are small businesses. So when I did that, I did a presentation a couple of years ago at HR Tech, which was my first really big one. It was focused, uh, you know, tailored on small businesses. So I got a really great response to that. So there's a lot of wonderful, wonderful things at Sherm. And I 
think I'm, I'm really glad that they're focusing on this, which is really squarely aimed at people from smaller companies. So I think if you're working for a company that has 35,000 people across the U.S., this is going to be maybe not right up your alley. But if you're one of the many thousands of attendees who works for a smaller company, it's it's really going to be a very, to tell you what it is, it's um, how to transform your HR department through technology, even if your HR department is just you. So it's really practical advice on how to use technology to help your HR department grow and thrive and serve the people in your business and serve the business itself. It's it's nice to see some focuses on the different sized organizations because HR professionals from all across the world go. And so you need to be available, make it something available for all of them. Oh, that's awesome. Right, right. Very excited, very nervous. Very excited. <laughs> oh, you'll do great. So as long as you're not at yeah. 7 a.m., we'll be there. <laughs> I'm not. I was so excited about that. <laughs> so, I, 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 like three o'clock. It couldn't be better. Oh, nice. Well, you'll get us. You'll get the people on that downward slump of. Well, should we go to one last one or go get ready to drink? You know, that's hopefully I'm near a Starbucks. <laughs> like I'm before a Starbucks and before a bar. There you so go. Between Starbucks and a bar. Love it. Well, Tracy, it is now time for everyone's favorite part of our show: the new and improved question connection. Woohoo! New year. All right. New questions. First question, who was your first professional mentor and what was the most important or impactful thing you learned from them? Um, I think my first not unofficial one was my aunt that I mentioned earlier, but my first real official mentor was a, a woman named um, Benita Joseph. And she was my supervisor when I worked for UPS. And um, I I learned a lot from her, but I think primarily I took away from her the value of understanding the business. And at UPS, everyone was required to, to work in the business at some point. But the biggest, single biggest lesson of my career um, till, to that point that I took away from her was I was extremely black and white. And as you grow in your career in HR, you learn that there's a lot of gray in HR. It was very black and white. It was either right or it was wrong. And there was nothing in between. And there was a gentleman on the team who was really rogue, um, in my opinion. And I had a hard time with that. I really had a hard time that he couldn't color in the lines. Terribly hard time. Now I color outside the lines all the time. So that's not a, an issue anymore. But then I was young in my early 20s and I had a hard time with that. And, you know, she knew that. And so she assigned me to work for him. Um, which was at the time devastating to me, but was probably the best thing that ever happened to me in my career because I learned to respect other people's opinions. I learned that there wasn't always one right answer. And I learned to work with and, and for people that I didn't necessarily agree with. And it ended up working out really well. She did me a huge favor, although I just wanted to curl up in a ball in a corner <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Tracy, who's one person you've gained in your network in the last year that more people should know? And, and I want to clarify that this doesn't have to be an HR person. It could be anybody sure. that you've met along the way that you think our listeners and we should know that maybe that we don't. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot. And I think there's a lot of ones that I would also say that have been mentioned. And But one of my favorite people to follow on Twitter and, and read things about was one of your guests, Katrina Kibben. So I yep. love following her stuff. I learn an awful lot. I think she's very no nonsense and practical in her approach. Um, so if I had to pick one person, I'd pick her. Katrina's awesome. We're fans. We're fans too. Yeah. yeah. yeah she's great. She's great. Yeah. I actually listened to her podcast on the way to work this morning. <laughs> I And I listened to it too. And I was like, I, she mentioned something about two people saying to her that week, you know, I saw you at, such and such, but I didn't want to come up to you. And like, I think I was one of those people that said that to her. So <laughs> I haven't met her in person, but I was one of those. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. So I'm like, should I go up and say hi? I'm not sure. So next time I will, though. Next time you definitely need to. So Tracy, if you could go back to the start of your career, way back when you were just a little high schooler to wanting to be in HR, what's one piece of advice you would give yourself based on what you know now? I talk about this a lot when I talk to, to groups or particularly when I talk with students is um, take more risks and particularly at the beginning of your career, that's the time to do it. Um, I don't like to regret anything and I really don't because it makes you who you are. I would have benefited from taking an assignment 
I'm in a different part of the country, traveling a lot more when I was much younger, you know, taking these things that to me were very, very scary at the time. Um, so that's, that's definitely the advice I'd give myself. That's good advice. How do you enjoy giving back to the HR community? Uh, I had so much help from wonderful mentors uh, coming up. Years ago, when I was in my 20s, I joined an HR group in Concord and had such wonderful relationships with people who became my friends and, and mentors um, and helped me along the way. And I actually became president of the group a, a few years later and learned a lot of different things and, and just had so much support. My first job, my first job really leaving HR, I felt like I didn't know what I was doing and I would not have survived if it wasn't for these folks. And I never forgot that. And so I feel like it's my duty and I love it too, but as an HR professional to help others. So never turn down a LinkedIn request from an HR professional. I, I always will answer calls. I'll always give advice. I, I, and I teach, I think the biggest thing I do now is I teach the SHRM certification course um, which has really become more than a course. It's become almost a community. So our, you know, every time I get a call from someone or I get an email or LinkedIn message that somebody passed the exam, um, it's just amazing. It's an amazing feeling. So that's, I think it, it's hard to believe that, you know, this is me helping these folks out, but it's, it's great. I love it. It's one of my favorite things that I do. Awesome. So what's your favorite movie? Yeah, this is a, a either people go, I've never heard of this movie, or they go, you're really weird. Um, so my favorite <laughs> movie is Heathers, which people have either never heard of Aww. or um, have heard of and go, you're really strange. But um, it's true. So <laughs> you're not strange. That's a good show. It's, uh, it's really, it's from the 80s. You'll see a theme here. But I love action movies. I love, 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 love. And we'll get to that later. But I love movies in general. And I see... Just about everything except for horror movies. Nice. How about your favorite musician or band? So my favorite all-time band is, and again, stuck in the 80s, is AHA. So Take On Me is very much my favorite ah! song. And I, wow. Which was prominent in Deadpool 2, which I know you loved, John. So it was yeah, featured in a couple of different places. So love 80s music. I also, around the holidays, I listen to Christmas music pretty much nonstop, but... <laughs> Not as I on the contemporary stuff. I leave that to my kids. Yeah, definitely. That's good choice. I don't think that one's been selected yet. So uh huh. Probably not. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would be surprised <laughs> if it was. How about a favorite TV show? We don't. We tend to binge. My husband and I do a lot of um, just binge watching. I don't think I can't remember the last time I watched a, a network show, but we just watched the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which we loved. Um, loved Man in the High Castle. We tend to do a lot of Amazon, Netflix shows, and um, we're currently about halfway through Game of Thrones, which I always said I would never, ever, ever watch, and now I'm trying to frantically catch up before it premieres in April, which I can't <laughs> wait for. So I swore up and down that I would never watch that darn show. Um, oh, I don't like dragons. Never say never. Don't like, <laughs> don't, but it's uh, it's great. Well, Tracy, I, I really loved Mrs. Maisel. I oh. talked about it on our pop culture show. Right. And and I have to say, I had a friend that told me in the 90s that AHA never toured the, toured the U.S. I don't know how valid that is. I will say, though, that I love their Bond song was The Living Daylights. And I think Great that is a song. tremendous and yes, Bond theme song. I can so, tell you they toured you because I saw them. Thank when you. I was 14, oh, even better. I, I remember oh, very nice. clearly. I saw them in Boston, so they did tour. <laughs> I, I'm going to find Let that guy know. and tell him because he was pull out the date for you. Yes, he did. And I have, <laughs> I have photographic evidence that I will never show anyone, but I do have it. I love it. I love it. Well, if you're not in this 80s hook or binge watching television, what else do you like to do outside of work? We love to travel, even if it's just like on a day trip somewhere um and we're really disney world freaks so we um i actually just got back i was there last week um we have a disney timeshare we spend as much time there as we can you know outside of that the traveling which obviously you can't do all the time um love to spend as much time outside except for the winter which i'm not a skier odd in new hampshire but um just 
trying to be outside, hiking, walking, just spending time. We go to Boston a lot. Um, we just love doing anything that's outside, except for like six months of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Which we're inside watching Netflix yeah. and Game of Thrones. Sounds about right. Well, that's that's what binge watching is for. You spend the winter time yes. snuggled up, binge watching on Netflix, and then you can go outside in the summer. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so Tracy, if you weren't in the HR profession, what do you think you'd be doing? I'd probably, and this may be unique, I think it probably is, but uh, I would probably actually be in the movie industry, not as an actor or actress. Well, I, sadly, I don't have that talent, but doing something behind the scenes. So it's something I actually thought about doing for a time then, but I would probably be working in Hollywood in some behind the scenes capacity. Cool. Well, Tracy, I have to say, we're glad you're not, because yeah. if you weren't, you were, we probably wouldn't, you might be on my 80s show, because we talk sometimes. <laughs> love but the not, 80s. Not here, yes, so. love the 80s. <laughs> but no, we uh, we really do appreciate you joining us tonight. I, you know, again, I appreciate connecting with you. I think it's been about a year now yeah. or so, but getting a chance to talk and love the story and I'm really excited to see where things go with HR Rebooted and, and to get a chance to visit it at Sherm 19 will be great too. So for the listeners that aren't following you, that are going to want to go find you now, especially to find out what those four words you decide on that you mm -hmm. post on Twitter, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Tracy Spawn. It's T R A C I E Spawn. Um, LinkedIn, Tracy Sponenberg, or HRrebooted.com. We will get all that in the show notes. Great. Wendy, how about you? What's the best way for the listeners to find you? Best way is on my blog, mydailyjourney.com. Daily is D as in dog, A-I-L-E-Y. And of course, the fourth Sunday of each month, 7 p.m. Eastern time, you will find me on Twitter as part of the HR Social Hour Twitter chat. How about you, John? Very easy. HRSocialHourPodcast.Podbean.com. Click on the left-hand side. You'll see some lines there. You can click and you'll see all links to my social. Find old shows that you haven't listened to. Download them directly rate, subscribe, review, anything you can do to continue to help us boost the signal we always appreciate. So again, Tracy, appreciate you being with us tonight. And so for the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast, I'm John. And I'm Wendy. And as always, be sure to connect, give back, and network. network. Take care, everybody. We'll see y'all soon.